Hello and welcome back. I'm Ash from Droning On and this is part two of our video series on neutral density filters, also known as ND filters. In part one, we showed you how to choose the correct ND filter based on the details that the DJI app gives you. In this video, we'll be showing you how to fit that filter and we'll also show you some video comparisons with and without an ND filter fitted. So sit back, enjoy and be sure to subscribe. So here I have an ND4 filter, also known as a two-stop filter. Essentially, this is just a small plastic lens which replaces the lens which is attached to the front of your Phantom as standard. It weighs virtually nothing, so there's no fear of overloading the motor on the gimbal um, or adding unnecessary weight to your drone. It's also easily attached and detached to the Phantom, so you can take a set of these filters with you to the field and use them as required. Here you can see the standard lens of the DJI Phantom compared to an ND4 filter. The ND4 filter that I've bought is one complete unit with a screw on cap and the glass lens. There are cheaper alternatives which come with a general push on cap into which you insert circular lenses. However, I would avoid these as they're easily scratched and may not give you the same quality as a solid plastic or glass lens. So how does it attach to the Phantom? Let's have a look. So remove your Phantom, ensure that you've unlocked your gimbal and then very gently unscrew the standard cap on the front. If you have troubles unscrewing that, detaching it, put an elastic band around it, wrap it over twice and then very, very gently use that to unscrew the lens but don't squeeze it as you unscrew it, else it won't remove. Take your new lens and then very gently screw it onto the front. And there we go. Simple. We'll now get the Phantom ready to fly and set up. And remember when flying in a new location, do a compass calibration because it only takes 10 seconds. It's a very bright but breezy day today and so on first takeoff we pushed a little bit but once up in the air the Phantom, as expected, holds its hover incredibly reliably. Now that we're up in the air we can start capturing some video to compare. In this initial video just the UV filter is attached. This is the standard lens that comes with your Phantom, so no ND filter. Looking at the bushes on the left and right hand side of the lake, you'll notice that the colours are washed out and they're severely lacking contrast. This is now the same shot but with an ND filter attached. Immediately there's more clarity and detail in the bushes. And with this split screen image, you can now compare them directly. The detail, the contrast and the colours are far better with the ND filter attached. Remember that without the ND filter attached, the Phantom was set to auto mode. Therefore, the Phantom is computing the shutter speed and the exposure by itself. We'll now zoom into a specific part of the image and try and compare them directly. Again, on the left hand side with the ND filter attached, the colours are so much better, the contrast is better and the picture itself looks sharper. So in summary, the ND4 filter on this day in this brightness has given us better clarity, far better colour, vibrance and saturation and much better contrast. It's also worth noting that all of this footage is raw. This hasn't been edited in post and this is directly from the SD card of the Phantom shot at 4K. Unfortunately on this day there were no clouds in the sky but an ND filter can also improve the visibility of clouds on a very very bright day. And this final shot is with the ND4 filter attached. In post editing there's been some minor colour and contrast changes just to demonstrate how good the footage can look. So hopefully that's been a good overview of how ND filters can help you get better video and photo results. But there are a few things to remember. Let's summarise them. Just a reminder here on the basics. The first thing that you should do is check the resolution that you're shooting in and ensure that the frame rate is correct. 
Next, open the manual exposure settings, ensure that the ISO is set to 1 or 200. Then set the shutter speed to twice that of your frame rate. So if you have a frame rate of 30 frames per second, set your shutter speed to 60. You should then look at the EV value and determine from that which ND filter you should use. Remember that the value for EV relates to what is called in photography a stop. So plus one is one stop. That equates to an ND2 filter. Plus two is a two stop. That's an ND4 filter. Plus three is three stops. That would be an ND8 filter and so on. With the ISO setting, try to avoid settings higher than 200, as the Phantom camera doesn't generally provide great results with anything higher. It's also worth noting that the EV or exposure value reading is always shown at the top of the DJI app window as well, so even when you've closed the manual exposure control dialog, you can always keep an eye on this reading, and you should, because light can change during the day, and therefore you may need to change the ND filter from when shooting in the morning to perhaps the afternoon. And finally, when changing the ND filter on your Phantom, remember to turn it off first, that's to avoid damaging the gimbal. And that's it for this two-part video series. I hope that you feel more competent in the use of ND4 filters. Please be sure to subscribe and also visit us online via our various social media channels. The boxes in the background arrived just this week and contain two exciting new quadcopters. Subscribe now to watch their reviews. Thanks for watching.